Welcome back to the Tide Here Hangar. This is Mike. I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for April 21st, 2024, 2024. Not 420, if you're part of Club 420. Well, I got something to say. The Tidarium Hanger reviewer code is TH if you want to help support the channel, not THC. Just, got, just want to clarify that for the Club 420 crowd. But strange stuff going on this week. There's not a huge amount of news, but what there is is quite interesting. So we're going to get into Transformers news in both original, mainline, legends, masterpiece. Some G.I. Joe news in the form of reactions. We're going to react to some of this stuff going on here, including there is some more stuff for the movie Maniacs. Of course, got things to say about that. They're pretty much statues if you're in on something like that. Then we've got some Master of the Universe news. Good, bad, all over the place, I guess. And then there is some Star Wars news, some other stuff in between we are going to talk about this and more coming up now as i said there's not a ton of news so not a whole lot going on at show z so i did dig around a little bit and find a couple of fun things first of all there is a reissue of the x transmos cosmos and this is their clat 2 deemed the best cosmos on the market 80 bucks it's a pre-order not up yet, but anyhow, figured I'd let everybody know about it. And then they have a pre-order for the Lucky Cat Extreme Trans ET-02SG Optimus Prime Shattered Glass version of Optimus Prime. And it seems to be about Legend Scale. Looks pretty cool. So, talking about Masterpiece, I think we need to talk about Masterpiece. It's MPM 15 Movie Masterpiece Decepticon Brawl, revealed by Hasbro China. And the thing is that this sort of kind of came out of nowhere there. And all of the question about what's going to happen with the MP line going to MPG. And then this is still operating on its own side mission going on there still. Chugging along MPM 15. So we get the brawl if you're into this kind of thing. And it looks pretty much like the movie. So if you're into it, then you should be very happy with it. The tank mode looks like a tank mode. I remember... I had a whole bunch of these that I bought loose, and I was really confused because I don't know if they were broken, but I never felt like I got them transformed just right. I do think a lot of mine that I picked up cheap on garage sales and stuff were all broken, missing parts, but uh, this still looks pretty cool. It looks pretty much spot on to the mode I got mine into <laughs> back in the day, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. If you're into the NPM line, then you might be interested in picking this one up. Now we've got Dinobot head so transart's giving us a little head there with their dinobot and turns out that i i guess i made a bit of an error last week there are two of these transmetal dinobots coming out from two different companies so as i get more information i will definitely expand on that pretty exciting to tell you the truth that we're getting two at the same exact time even though it's probably my lesser. I still like the first Dinobot more. This kind of gets into late, late end of series kind of character, but I'm still excited that they're doing it. Someone's going to take a stab at it, and I'm pretty sure that the Transart one's going to look good, but I'm interested in seeing what another company does that's making the exact same one, trying to operate in the same space, if that's really all true. But anyhow, there's the head, and it looks exactly spot on, like Transart always does. So we got some pictures of the Yellow Park Rise of the Beast Rhinox model kit, and it looks really good. And I've got to say that uh, Rhinox is getting a lot of love. Rhinox is getting a lot of love from the Masterpiece because that one's still going to be coming out later on this year. I think August, I believe. And then we've got this one here, which looks to be in stock, actually. At Show Z, 34 bucks. So that's even cheaper than the Pro Series. And so that looks pretty cool. And then right next to it is the Yolo Parks Optimus Prime, which looks amazing, which is their uh, Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. Which now I kind of wish I would have picked that one up for the price and seeing where they're going. That I wish I would have picked that one up. Hopefully they start reissuing these, maybe slightly different paint jobs and stuff. But anyhow, if you're interested in Rhinox and this one, the information on the scale it is the 7.87, so about eight inches, kind of like with their Pro Series. But these aren't the Pro Series. It's deemed a model kit, meaning you have to assemble it with putting a few, pop the arms on and legs on and a few pieces here and there. But still looking really good. A lot of articulation. I really think I'm, I'm tempted. 
I'm, I might just I might just buy it. I might go in on it. But anyway, I was trying to stay trying to stay with Rise of the Beast kind of stuff, even though it looks so good. Good, good. Speaking of model kits, we got the Trumpeter, Trumpeter Optimus Prime. This is the Nemesis Prime Smart Kit. It is a model kit, and I believe this one is not like the ones you just clip some arms on and stuff. It's, this is gonna take some time. This is probably the two-hour build, I believe. I believe. I haven't got into any of this, and I haven't done much of this, but it still looks really good, and it's a pretty impressive little bot itself. This is the Nimbus. The standard Prime's out. I guess I could check a review out and find out a little bit more information about that, but if you're interested in this kind of stuff, then it is coming soon. I don't see it for Peter just yet. Metagate's throwing out a teaser for their Masterpiece offering here, and it's kind of strange. I don't know why they tease it like this, why this is the route that they go, but anyhow, why not just go full on and show a whole bunch of pictures of everything, but there is a teaser from Metagate, if that helps, and Metagate's done some interesting stuff in the past, and we'll see where they're going with this. So in some Legend Scale, there is Dr. Wu making some replacement faces for the RC that was the as a mechanic studio, the MFT Legends. And the thing about it was that I didn't quite get it, but now I get it. I understand. And I see why we need it. That's a pretty good looking face on there. You can get it at Show Z also as an add-on. So it's a $2 add-on. If you're already buying something, they'll throw it in your box and add it on with it. I've got an add-on for some Energon Cube, so we'll see how that goes when it comes in. But this is something if you're interested in picking this up two bucks and you get a couple of faces but that's a good looking face uh, i think i might have to do it because i have that figure so why not give it a shot looks like robot toys is going to making some sort of a bumblebee now here's the thing we don't know anything <laughs> okay we know for sure that that's a volkswagen bug looking vehicle we know for sure the hand is a real hand. It's not a AI or anything like that. Past that, we don't know. I don't know. There's no information at all. Literally nothing. Just this picture. So is it going to be along the lines of G1-ish? I have no clue. But this is a teaser from Robot Toys. Guessing we'll know more next week. Back to you, Dr. Wood. We got the Brutality. We got two different cassettes. Brutality and Slaughter. I guess is what they're called here and try to get all that in one shot there so anyway yeah they look pretty good uh, these are cassettes and I think their target scale size would be to fit inside of like Hasbro mainline I believe I've never bought any of these and I'm speaking purely from hearing from other people talk about them but I think they scale to fit in the Hasbro ones, not the Vintage G1 or not the Masterpiece, the new scale for Siege on in to Earthrise, that kind of stuff. That's my belief, and yeah, they look good. Well, they look good as renders-ish drawings. Rising Force is rising up with a force of production. They are producing their Motormaster and... It looks pretty good. I mean, uh, first of all, I like seeing the behind-the-scenes manufacturing processes and, I guess, are carried over in these baskets and then take it to the next phase of the next step. But then we get into seeing what it looks like. And overall, it's not bad. It's not a bad one, really. Uh, they're doing decent work on it. And so it's an option if you're in on this one. If you didn't want to go with say the magic square or something then yeah it's it's an option it's out there and uh the head sculpt looks really nice i mean it, it looks like a quality product that's just what i'm saying it looks looks like a quality product i'm not in it i'm not picking any of this stuff up but uh, i'm happy with what i've got i don't think i need to move into it but i still think it looks really good now i'm not really sure if this thing here <laughs> classifies as masterpiece or legends or mainline or whatever but it's just weird it's trans robots and it turns into this sort of semi dinosaur kind of thing and uh, here it is in sort of the bot mode so you can look and see this is kind of one of these strange off the wall kind of things that's out there 
Don't even know how you get your hands on it, but it's so weird. Figured we'd look at it. They do call this the Trans Robots. That's what it's called. And yeah, it's uh, there's three of them. They're different colors, but they pretty much are the exact same mold. And let's just say some fun generic toy. All right, so the Transformers 1 movie is... It's up for a trailer, and I'm going to try to roll a little bit of the trailer footage in here. Last time I got my hand slapped, and I had to just re-edit the whole video, but I'm still going to try it anyway. So what I want to say about this is, uh, from what I see from it, I think that this is good for a lot of reasons. This uh, Transformers 1 movie, because A, it's an origin story. And so it's not like, okay, if you're G1, you can still love it. If you don't even know much about Transformers, you can still get it and enjoy it. It is set up to be kind of goofy and fun and quirky to attract kids and kids to enjoy it. Again, and I'll say this again, if we want our franchise to be carried on after we're dead and gone, then, I mean, why do you care? But if you still want that, kids need to be interested in it. And so this is a fun way to attract a new generation, which I think Transformers has done better than any franchise, attracting a new generation multiple times. And they've done it. And this, this is, I think, exactly what is needed right now to do that. Plus, we'll, we'd have a lot of fun finding the origins of Optimus Prime and Megatron. And if they do it in a, in a way we disagree with, it doesn't really matter because G1 is still G1. But I'm pretty sure they're honoring G1 to a point. And they're going to have some new stuff into it. So I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a good thing for the franchise. And that leads into the toys. I was really enjoying the trailer and I was getting excited. I was thinking, darn, I might have to buy some of these toys. Then I saw them and I was like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't have to buy any of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm, it's not for me. But if it brings the kids in, that's awesome. I mean, this is kind of like Cyberverse in a way with the toys or Cyberverse toys. They got to have that get the kid in kind of simple transformations not really that great of figures in my opinion but something fun kids could fiddle with and i think that's what it is and anyhow for collectors the show is going to be a fun movie to watch and then the toys hopefully the kids buy them and enjoy them so i guess i should go watch this review from billy billy about the deluxe transformers one optimus prime in hand images got them in hand pretty darn quick didn't he and there it is. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It's not anything that I'm going to be running out to buy day one or maybe on a clearance sale or something. But I, I still think it looks okay. I think it's cool. It's kind of something fun to have out there. Here's the alt mode. And that's, yeah, that's what the alt mode looks like. The truck looks like. I bet you, like, you could put his gun right in his hand because his hand's right there facing forward on the side of him. That, that's, that's convenient, right? So we got pictures of the Transformers Generations comic book Shockwave and Grimlock in hand images, and I think they both look fantastic. They look great. I would have liked a deeper, darker purple of the Shockwave, but we are getting that with the bridge set. So I'm happy with the bridge set. I'm actually happy with the one I got anyway. Uh, still looks great in the comic version. Uh, Grimlock also looks cool in the comic version. But none of these are really for me. I don't need multiples of these at all. And I will point out if you're looking for the yellow Grimlock that's at Walmart, to Walmart exclusive. I, I caught one on sale for 27 For 27 I thought it was a pretty good price. If I catch these on sale, I probably would pick them up, but not for full price. But I still think they look cool. And, a, you know, A, if you miss Grimlock, you don't want to wait a year and a half till the reissue comes. Or if you just want another variation or something that looks cool. I mean, that's an option for you. Options are pretty good. All right, so I guess I'm talking about this. This is a pre-order alert for Jetfire. And then a two-pack, Prime and Ratchet, which, uh, okay, I've got my Jetfire. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. The the Siege Jetfire was immediately discounted to 44 bucks at Walmart for whatever reason when it first came out. It's like maybe it made two weeks and then system-wide went to 44 bucks and then was gone almost instantly. I don't know why that happened, but anyhow, the... Retail for Jetfire is 90 and then the 2-pack Prime and Ratchet is 60 And I think you can get it pretty much everywhere. It's not even an exclusives. They're not exclusives to anywhere. But I've got to say, this is, I think, the fourth run of that Siege Jetfire, which I think is a really good figure, a really solid figure. So if you're in on it, get it. And you can sort of cheat it in a way, if you want. You can sort of cheat it to actually fit in your masterpiece couple. Anyway... Cool stuff, heads up, on these reissues, and if you like them. 
I think they're trying to also wear out that Prime Mold, because I think we have a new Prime Mold coming pretty soon that's going to be better. And this is, we're going to look at this and go, how did we ever think that was the best one? Okay, so we've got the designer, Mark Clonus, putting out pictures and kind of a in-hand image behind the scenes of this squeeze play. I will have to admit, I just don't know anything about a squeeze play, so it's kind of cool to see this. And it, I think looking at this makes it a little bit more interesting to me. I don't buy every Hasbro release, but I do buy some that I think we won't see in the third party range, masterpiece range, and this does look pretty interesting, pretty cool. I think it is part of a set though. And then here is the alt mode for it. So again, something cool, something interesting, something different, and if you're in on it, it's uh, more fun. And yeah, it's part of that Legacy United versus multi-pack that had four figures in. Anyway, pretty cool. All right, getting into some ramen toy news and their Musk Dairo Ramen is being delayed until June of 2024. They need more fine tuning to it. So good that they get out ahead of that and just let you know they're planning on doing the pre-orders in June as long as everything still goes really well. Then also uh, showing pictures of this uh, Bridge Lane tank type of deal and there's going to be other different things that they're going to do with this tank but i didn't realize when looking at it how big it was i, I obviously i should have obviously i understand size perspective all this kind of stuff but i think it is a good size some people did kind of say they felt like it was small in comparison to their ramen racer but i feel like it's every bit as big as i would need i, I don't know if i'd want it any bigger at all than this i think it looks really nice and there's other configurations that you can do with it, or they're working on other things with it. I don't know all the details just yet. Of course, uh, no pre-orders or anything are up. They're still working on prototypes, working on all the details out. Still really exciting stuff they got going on. I'm not sure they're going to have three different versions to order. How all that's going to go. Still excited to see what's going on with this. But the wording is that it has four different configurations. That wording, I'm not sure if all the parts will be included you just put on the parts you want, or if you have or different parts separate. But anyway, still really cool stuff they got going on with this vehicle. And of course, they're experimenting with different colorways and different things they can do with it. It's just really awesome stuff that could happen. Uh, just really the fact that once you get the base down, there's so many different colors and options configurations. It's just kind of exciting, actually. Another interesting thing is that this is the plastic tray that was created. And I didn't know the whole process. I've always wondered, how are these made? And Ace made a comment something along the lines of this figure and the parts had to be sacrificed to create the tray. So do they just take one unit and they plaster it over it to make the tray, I guess, is how it does. And that's cool. Uh, just interesting seeing every step of the way is another fun aspect of Ramen Toy. Definitely a lot of fun. Got a couple more pictures of the Great White. I'm really excited for this Great White. It looks fantastic. Uh, probably the most anticipated release for me is this Great White. Just something that has never, ever been made before, ever. I mean, it's we don't get a lot of that these days. We don't get a lot of stuff that's absolutely never been made before. We get some modern iterations of something in the past, but something that's never been made, aside from custom kits that are just like add-on kits, and here it is converted all the way looking awesome and you know what i'm perfectly fine with however long we're waiting to get it because i know it's going to be right and just looking at it yeah very very exciting to get my hands on this and he did seem to show that there's a proper way and an improper way to extend these fins and i'm sure it makes a lot more sense in hand let's just be honest it makes a lot more sense in hand but it looks like when you fold it up, you got to pull it out and then fold it all the way up or it will break. And I mean, you can tell by the one on the left, it it's over from where it sits in car mode. Anyway, I like how they show all these little details of what they're working on. All right, so we've got some more updates on the movie Maniacs statues here, which do look pretty cool. This is Big Lebowski, the dude, and this is the dazed and confused figure this is david wooderson 
Here's what I want to say. I think that the statues, they look like spot on perfect, but wouldn't it be fun to have like a little button and say one of their top phrases? Like, what's the top phrase from Days and Confused? That something along the lines of, I keep getting older. But the thing about high school girls is they stay the same age. I mean, that would be fun. If you don't believe me that that's sort of the line, you can check it here on YouTube. Pretty easy. All right, I actually was... I might pick this up still, but I was considering picking this up. I thought it was a two-pack the way they showed this picture. And it's only one. And it's $63 for one. Which actually is in their price range area. This is the Skolomania Fighting X Layer action figure. One twelfth scale. Coming uh, Q4 of 2024 for 63 bucks at BBTS. I think it's just at BBTS. Might be at other places too, but... Comes with two interchangeable head sculpts and six interchangeable pairs of hands. And looks pretty cool. Pretty interesting. And if you want a Skull Warrior, just a generic one, maybe you don't care about what lore it's from, you might want to pick it up. So I think I saw this as I was running around Oklahoma City today. I saw, and I do know I saw that, uh, what, what is the Turtles 2-pack in there that has a space Donatello. Considered getting it, but... Uh, I didn't see the standard uh, Rocksteady and Bebop, but I guess they're reissuing that again for the third or fourth time. And uh, it's a really good set right there. I don't know if I saw that Silver Falcon for the Gargoyles, but I would be ultra tempted if I did. It looks pretty cool. I've got pretty much all the Gargoyles, even though I'm not really that into it. But I think they look good. I think they're a great value. So this stuff's been pretty easy to find. But I went to one Target, and I think Rockwell or something, Rockwell Target, and it didn't have anything for this at all. And I'm hearing that. I'm hearing some people aren't seeing it in the stores so much, but I also hear you're able to catch it online, so it's not really hard to get. You might have to work a little bit to get it, but uh, yeah, I've seen almost everything in the stores. Now, I don't talk a lot about Marvel Legends because I just don't collect a lot of Marvel Legends. Funny that I just put a video up and I was talking about Wolverine and I bought my first Wolverine and I saw the title of this and it says Wolverine Legends 85th Wolverine and I said oh so they've made 85 Marvel Legend Wolverines already that might be actually quite accurate I don't know but it's for an 85th anniversary of Wolverine so once I had to clarify the details I was like oh I wanted a definitive number on how many of these they've made. 85 might be right, though. Anyway, it still looks pretty cool, pretty interesting. This looks more animation, animated, probably. Not not even comic book. Definitely animation looking. And it looks pretty interesting, pretty cool. I'm just happy the one that I got, I don't need any more Wolverines after that. And the Spider-Man, I was just curious what it's all about. It's 30 bucks. So the Wolverine's 25, Spider-Man's 30, and it's from when Doc Ock swaps bodies with Peter Parker. And it's also the 85th anniversary. But probably the 150th. Spider-Man made, right? Am I right? All right, so this is another one of those things that probably makes people not want to collect Motu anymore. It's the confusion about this Vipor. I still don't know where to get it. They say, I heard it was a Walmart exclusive. I'm looking at it directly right now on Amazon, but it's still, it's currently unavailable and we'll let you know it's back in stock. And it's frustrating to see this kind of stuff, to try to somehow figure out how to get this stuff. But... This looks cool, and I'd order it if I could, but I can't. So I guess I'll be playing that guessing game on where to get it and watching Amazon. I hope that this stuff's not too hard to get, but it feels like going forward, the Origin stuff is... It's a lot of work to keep up with to try to collect, and it's frustrating. I did get this Demo Gorgon at the Target. I have to admit, I think this is kind of cool. Actually, this really is cool. When I first saw it and heard about it, I thought, why bother? What's the point? It's that whole upside down packaging, which is cool and interesting. It's fun. And then the figure itself just looks really cool. And it was a great idea for a crossover exclusive. Oh, I got to hand it to him. Great idea. And anyway, I picked it up, picked one up. They have like three or four. They sold out quick though. So I'm going to place this in the must have category and... I wouldn't have said that three years ago, but I've really 
gotten more interested in the movie stuff for Masters Universe, especially since there's not much in existence. And the fact they're making it, I um, get my hands on it. It's been hard to get my hands on any of the movie Masters stuff. None of it really is showing up at retail. It's all been ordered online. And I know some people see it in their areas, some people in the land of plenty. In higher populated areas, they will get larger quantities. And with that, it's easier for them to get their hands on it. But here, I don't ever see them, this kind of stuff, so I don't have to pre-order this. But Beastman looks good, looks cool. And I have to admit, I went and rewatched the movie, and I really did enjoy the movie. I hated it back in the day, to tell you the truth, because it wasn't a one-to-one -one copy of the cartoon. But nowadays, I appreciate the differences. So there's a box picture of the new Eternia Master Universe uh, Skeleton Throne with the Skeletor. Here's the thing. I think that uh, this is expensive. It's cool that they're offering it. I'm not sure if I'm in on it. It's like 70 bucks or something along those lines. But yeah, it's cool. There's a whole lot of other artwork that other people can go into detail on, on all the sides and all this stuff. But cool that they're making it and the box looks to be closed box. I actually did see some more uh, new attorney stuff. I considered buying it, but I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not going to do every single thing Masters of the Universe. Anyway, getting into this. This is Super 7 Reactions. This has got a saber tooth figure, Snow Serpent, and the Red Jackal Destro. And at this point, I'm not sure how deep they're going to go with this reaction. Brian said that he's going to do both side by side. And saying that he's going to target the $20 price point for the O-Rings when the O-Rings come out. But I'm wondering where this whole line goes. And it used to be he put up like 20 different figures in each wave, and now we're getting these three. Still cool stuff, still interesting, um, but I'm, I'm not interested in 20. I probably would do many of the O-Ring figures for 20. And remember, he says he's not going to He's not going to come out and do all the ones that have already been made. He's going to be coming out sideways, doing some stuff that's different. Kind of like this, in a way. All right, so we got some Star Wars news here. The Black Series R5, D4, BD, 72, and Pit Droids set for Black Series. And I believe, I don't think any of this stuff's really remade except that tiny little droid. The BD-72, I think, has been made. I don't think we've gotten Pit Droids in black series but i might be mistaken anyway this is a 50 dollars set due out in 2024 and a target exclusive if you're interested in this i think this is kind of cool bundle a whole bunch of stuff into it but you got a 25 dollars r5 d4 and then you've got the rest of these for another 25 dollars so i'm not in on it for the price point and i don't need another r5 d4 but it's it's interesting i mean this isn't the worst thing that they've done I mean, the worst thing they could do is give us yet another Mandalorian fig. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we have the Mandalorian private tier. I'm, I'm lost with how many Mandalorians there are. I'm sure there's people that buy them all and are excited about them, but I lose interest now with more and more Man Mandalorians. But Mando Season 3, Target exclusive. But anyhow, if you're interested in it, then there it is. I will give them one thing. There's plastic in it. You can see the figure again, so good job with that so the only other, other news that's out there is from jedi temple archives they've got a story talking about target apparently stops carrying the vintage collection so they've looked and there's no more vintage collection in the computer or they can't find any more upcoming vintage collection and i don't know how true that is sometimes there's a transitionary period they're changing over dcpis and doing things and then they pop back up and people worry that they're gonna stop carrying something like say marvel legends they there was a rumor that they were going to stop carrying marvel legends i didn't really care because i don't really collect it that much but with this here i actually still don't care because i don't buy it at 17 dollars and and that's kind of saying something if target truly did stop carrying these because they don't sell well at 17 dollars they still carry the retro because the retro at 12 is still somewhat in the ballpark of reasonably priced but i gotta tell you this oh this just in it was no longer at target it's picked up by ollie's and ross as a shared exclusive okay going forward <laughs> just kidding but that's kind of the world we live in 
today. All right, so let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review and what else is going on out there that I missed. I like to stay in the know. Like and subscribe and Tidarium Hanger out.